What's up, Liron here, and today we're going Van Gogh and painting sunflowers in watercolor. Um, this is much easier than it seems, this painting. Uh, it's great for beginners, it's relatively easy, fewer layers. Now you want to make sure to stick around till the part where I add the background, because this is what really makes it pop, and I think you're gonna really enjoy this one, so let's get started. Alright, so we'll start with the drawing process. Now bear in mind, my goal with this painting is to allow uh, myself to be as fresh as possible, okay? And this is really important. So to be as fresh, I'm gonna need a drawing that supports that, that makes life easier for me. So first off, I have this diagonal line that uh, is connected to this coffee machine, I think, but I don't really care what it is. I'm just putting it where I like it. And then we have this additional line uh, like here uh, of, I don't know what that is, maybe a ceramics plate or something like this. This will help me place my vase in, okay? So the base of the vase is gonna be somewhere around here. Now uh, the top part is around the middle of the painting, okay? So I have to place it somewhere here. Constraining, constraining a large uh, shape in a small space can really help you better have proportions and preserve the proportions overall, okay? So now I place this line, this uh, is uh, the main line representing this shape because it's just a straight shape. And this also will help me figure out uh, the structure here. So its base is rounded like so, it's, uh, its top, sorry. And then its base is also rounded. Now here, where the bump is, is somewhere around this area, okay? So I'm just gonna draw that in, and I don't care to be exactly uh, uh, like the reference photo. I don't want it to necessarily be 100% the same shape of vase, but I do want it to end up working. So and then it goes in, curves in like that, and kind of pulls out like so, okay? And hopefully that gives us somewhat of an accurate representation. I'm gonna put in the sunflowers, which are the main object here. Now, here's a cool trick for you. I'm gonna put one sunflower as a circle and another one as an oval, because this is exactly the direction in which they're pointing. Then we have another one here on the side that kind of spills out like so, and another one here at the back that goes moves like this. And putting it with these simple shapes is, is really helpful in getting their shape to be right. This sunflower, its basis is somewhere uh, around here, something like that. This one's basis, and this is really important, is not in the middle, but it's a bit inwards. Okay, and this, placing it here will really help you better visualize its shape. Now from those bases, we just pull out a couple of lines. And again, my goal is to be as fresh as I can with the paint, so I don't wanna put in too many details. I'm just gonna portray uh, the shape of the sunflower in as simple lines as I can. And I'm just following what I see, the petals, their shape. Um, in this stage already, it's useful to merge some shapes if they're identical, meaning this is all gonna be pretty much one big highlight, so uh, it's okay to kind of connect these several petals. You don't want to make it too complex for you later on when you have to read uh, what you're gonna paint. Now another one, this one is less prominent but still quite prominent. So we have this off stray leaf, then another one going back like that, some other here, and now we'll get the distances right because we constrained it in an oval, okay? This is really important. Another one here, and I'm making the sketching process really short because I know it's not as interesting as the painting process, I would say, Plus, I don't want you to worry too much about that. I want us to be able to work freshly with the paint and have that be the thing that creates the beauty in our work, okay? Now we have this part that just, I'm gonna do this one real fast. Just a couple of petals, and this is it. This one is, uh, we can see the green base, okay? That's important, so green. And believe it or not, this is all we need for the painting process. Plus, we're gonna need to add a shadow to the vase. And now, because we sketched the base of the vase, we can tell where that light is uh, gonna cast the shadow, okay? So this is the shadowy area. We have a couple of highlights on the vase that I do wanna preserve, so somewhere around here. I'm gonna paint around these. And this is pretty much it in terms of the sketching, and I'm gonna tell you now about the painting process. So I now have everything I need to paint. I've got the palette, I've got the paper, I've got some brushes, I have a cup here just for the water and some uh, uh, paper towels. 
to get rid of excess moist in the brushes. And now we can begin. Now, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the painting strategy. We have a couple of highlights that I wanna preserve here and here on this flower as well and on the vase, okay? So what I think I'm gonna do is a first wash that's very loose and fun and the main purpose will be to preserve a lot of yellow here. So I'm gonna place a lot of yellow here and it's gonna be quite dark. You need it to be stronger, especially when you have a lot of water on the paper. So a lot of yellow, I'm gonna let the background kind of run into green and, and blue and all sorts of colors like that. And I'm gonna also get some of the vase in nice blues, paint around these highlights and I'm gonna talk it through and you'll better understand what I'm doing. So first I need to mix a pretty large amount of yellow. Now a lot of people stress over, you know, Know they have paint in their palette. What shall they do with it? I'm not too worried about that. I'm just picking up a lot of yellow and it will counteract the yellow that I already have here. I'm gonna add a lot of water to this. We're gonna need a lot of water here. And with that, I think we can get started. So I'm just gonna put in the yellow and notice how careless I am with it, okay? I'm really careless. I'm just putting in that yellow. Not too worried about anything and this is really I think the, the most fun part of the painting okay so I'm gonna place that yellow in here now the more I get off center I'm just gonna wet it a bit and start neutralizing and maybe adding a bit of the phthalo blue okay this is nickel azo yellow this is phthalo blue I'm just gonna add this kind of blue here to the surrounding now it may seem a little dirty it may seem not so beautiful right now but rest assured that uh, what's gonna happen is that the moment we continue with the painting and we're gonna negative paint, the shapes of the flowers will really uh, come to life and will look beautiful, okay? So this is really how it works and it's so funny because you may think it, it's, it's terrible or something's not working when it actually does. So we're gonna continue. This one is gonna be fairly light. I'm gonna add a bit more water to this area, but just enough not to overwork it. Now here I do want a bit of pure blue Okay, so we're gonna mix some more phthalo blue and phthalo blue is so dominant that I'm not worried I'm gonna get a pure blue in just as like as, as really quickly, let's say. Uh, so now, now I do have a couple of very light highlights here on the vase and I will kind of paint around them very impressionistically. Um, so something like this, something like that. And I think this is pretty much it for the highlights. And now what's missing here is really a bit of red. So what I'm gonna do is add a bit of pure red and I'm gonna use this um, kind of a crimson or alizarin or maybe this one is Crinacodone Rose, I believe. So just a bit of that to have a bit of red. I find that if I don't have at least all three primary colors, uh, it can lead to a bit of an inferior result. So I will do that. And around the bottom, I think I'll probably just fill in the area with kind of a, a muted mixture, okay? Like so. So we have almost everything. We have some pure blue, almost pure blue. We have some yellow, we have some red. Now I just wanna blend out some of those highlights because they're a bit too stark. It's okay if they're left like that, but I prefer the look where it's not as stark. Now this looks like a big mess. It may not look even as pretty as you wish it to, but don't worry. All of these yellow sections are gonna be super bright once we just come back with a dark wash around it. We're gonna do it very fresh, very uh, a la prima and you're gonna see, you're gonna love the result. Now I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, so now the painting is dry and let's do a quick strategy talk before we move on. Now we're gonna set the middle values. Now the middle values are usually what takes up most of the painting. It's the one thing that's very easy to miss but it's very important. So here are the mid values. All of the leaves, the, the petals of the sunflower to this side are mostly uh, in some kind of shadow. Same goes for these leaves on this area because they uh, are against the direction of the light. Uh, these ones are also a little darker while these leaves are gonna stay a little light, okay? And this isn't really a, an exciting part of the painting process at all. The exciting part is gonna be when we put in the background, but you have to remember that this step is really important to put the highlights in the right context. So let's begin. And I'm actually gonna start with a place where it's rather easy and it's this petal. So you can see there's a bit of shadow over here and then there's a bit of shadow near its base. Okay, so I'm just starting to set up these shapes. This petal is in the shadow as well. 
Um, let's see what we have here. I'm holding it a bit closer to the tip just to gain a little more control, but I'm not too obsessed uh, with it. We actually have another pedal here in the background that I didn't even draw. Um, this one already starts getting in the shadow, and here's where the shadow becomes much more dominant. Okay, so all of this area here to the left, um, and I'm gonna uh, remove some of the moisture and soak up some of this as well because I don't want too many, too much water there. Now this is my chance to inject a bit more red into it, so I'm using a perlin red this time, um, and I'm just placing it in now. Also now you have to remember you don't see anything in the right context yet, okay? So don't worry if it looks a bit off or you're not sure what you're looking at, that's really a part of it. Uh, but our goal here is just to draw the mid values, everything that's in the middle, okay? That also means this shape, well this shape is more of a, a dark shadow. Let's get that in already here in one go. So I'm gonna add a lot of red and mix it with just a bit of blue. And this will be the middle shape right here. And I'm, because I want to connect everything as much as possible, this is important. So this swash is the most complex. It's not that rewarding in a, in a fun way of look at the beautiful result we got, but it is an important um, stepping stone towards the, uh, the, the end of this process. I'm going to finish with this uh, part of the, this flower. Um, so here we have a couple of other shadows. I'm going to add a bit more yellow to keep this a little pure, a bit more red like so, especially in the areas that are more in the light. So we have this kind of a petal here. There is a bit of light on this one here. Uh, what else? We have a couple of other leaves here and we're gonna go negatively around this one because this is gonna be a, a huge highlight here as well. Now this, the edge of this leaf has a bit of shadow on it the edge of this leaf, and a lot of this painting process is just belief. You just have to believe that it will end up working out, okay? You don't know right now, you don't you don't have a clear indication. That's part of the challenge of, of watercolor painting and a painting of any sort, of any type. So here we have this petal, I'm gonna make it a little uh, darker, as you can see in the reference. This one's well a bit dark, these are against the direction of the light, so they get less light and it's all about really carefully observing the reference and figuring out the shape of the leaves. For example, this leaf has a bit of a complex shadow shape on it. It has one thin shadow around here, then a thicker area around here, then back to the shadow here and a bit of a highlight in the middle of the leaf. Okay, and it's all about reading those shapes. Here we have a bit of a shadow, but here this part is already in the highlight. So now I'm gonna grab a bit of that uh, darker value and I'm gonna place it in here very carefully. I'm gonna uh, remove some moist from the brush because I don't want too much water because water leads to movement and then you have less control, okay? So you have this and we, we really don't know exactly what we'll get until we're in the very end of the process. This is what's so fun and scary about watercolor painting. Now we have this uh, flower here as well. This is a little more muted but I'll keep it uh, I'll, I'll keep it to some kind of an orange like this. And this is where we're gonna start introducing some greens. And notice how the technique I'm using is fairly simple. I'm not doing anything that you can't do really. It's very simple. Now I'm gonna switch gears and move into some greens. I wanna use the other brush for that. So let's grab a bit of the uh, phthalo blue. This is red shade, by the way, if you're curious. Now we're gonna add a bit of that yellow and a bit of this yellow as well, the raw sienna. It's gonna mute it and make it into a bit of a more natural green. Now let's see what we have now. now. I'm gonna place that in. I'm gonna allow it to touch because that's the beauty of watercolor, that things do merge together to some extent. But here if I allow it to touch, it may blend too much. So I'm keeping it to a minimum. We have a leaf here that I kind of missed, but I do wanna get in. So it's somewhere around here negatively around this shape of the petal, like so. Uh, we have a bit of greenery here behind, and the reason I'm painting it now is because it's still in the uh, negative shape, it's still in the mid value, okay? Despite it being a part of a negative shape, it's still in the mid value, okay? So a bit of green here. Um, I'm gonna lift back some of this area, make it a little lighter, excess water here and there, uh, going back to my green, we have a bit of a green here behind these leaves. So something like that. And this area is still a highlight, so I'm not painting over that. 
and hopefully you can start seeing the shape being built in front of you, but I don't expect you to see too much of it, so don't worry if it's still kind of a mystery of how this is going to end. We will really only know when we finish this, okay? When we when we add the, the darkest shadows, that's when the, the only time when we'll actually know what this is going to end up like, okay? Now, I'm going to go over the vase with blue. This entire vase is in blue, and, and with this, I do want to preserve some pure blue, so I'll use a new well for that. I don't want to use a blue that already has some green in it, some yellow. Um, and this is, again, mid-value, so still not the deepest shadows. Remember that, because it is important to remember, and I got some paint on my table, which isn't good because this blue is staining, and there's a bit of dirt here. I'm get, getting rid of that. But in any case, this is the mid-value still. So I'm going to cover up this petal comes through here, so I'm going to negative paint around that. But in any case, I'm going to cover up a lot of the vase because a lot of it is, most of it, in fact, is a mid-value, okay? Um, so I'm just going to fill it all up while avoiding the highlights, okay? Uh, and now you start to get a feel for the end result and what this is going to look like. And I'm going to once again paint around the highlights that I left earlier. And it's okay if I'm not 100% accurate, that's fine. But what we can do, by the way, at this stage is start doing some wet and wets on the vase, okay? So I'm gonna fill that area up like so. Like this. All the way to the bottom. We do have a couple of highlights uh, on it that aren't as light, so I'm just gonna pick those up. I'm using another brush, wetting it wiping it on my paper towel and then coming back and lifting back some of that. You see, and there we go, we got a highlight. Now, I do want to exploit some wet and wet effect, so I'm going to grab a bit of a darker blue and all the way around the edge, I'm going to feed it with that darker blue again, all the way around here and also around this part, because from what I can tell at least, this part is in the shadow to some degree, okay? And all of this is going to make much more sense once we put in the shadow. So don't worry if it still looks a little off. Now I'm going to connect this to uh, the cast shadow on the table, to which I'm going to add a bit of, I don't know why, but a bit of the reds I want, because I want to make a, a distinction between the two. So this is the shadow that's being cast by the vase, okay? And I think with that, we're almost done with the mid values. I do want to add a bit of orangeyness to uh, the petals on the left that I said I wouldn't touch, but now that I look at them again, I want to add just a bit of orange spots here and there, and maybe to the sides, maybe here, like so, like that. And this is pretty much it for this wash. It still looks weird, I know, and that's the beautiful part. We're gonna add the background and you'll be blown away by how it suddenly pops, okay? So uh, there are a few other green areas that you could add, so kind of like this, like that. Just improvise, you don't have to follow the reference to the T. I'm gonna just straighten that line like so. Uh, there are a couple more greens here, and you can add your own, obviously, like if you wanna add another leaf here, you can just go ahead and add it. Uh, but for now, we're gonna let it dry, come back, add the background, and be blown away. Okay, so this one's fully dry, and we've reached the best part of this painting process, the most satisfying moment, probably. Now, I have an important note about this wash, and this is really important to remember. It's gonna be the simplest, conceptually, but the hardest to perform uh, technically, technical-wise, okay, technique-wise. Uh, and the reason for that is, we have to cover all of the background and merge it in a beautiful and graceful way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to, for the background is I'm gonna use um, Carbazole Violet because that's a paint that is very easy for me to use to uh, quickly create a very dark value, okay? Now, I'm gonna have to mix a lot of it. More than you think, the paint is gonna run out really fast and this is my, my note to you at this stage. I have to mix extraordinary uh, uh, quantity, an extraordinary quantity of paint if I really wanna be able to hold this wash together and have it uh, as dark as I want it to be. So now I'm gonna start with a strong, strong violet sense here and I switch to a larger Raphael brush uh, because I need to cover up large spaces really fast, okay? Now, uh, I will have to watch out for the details with this brush because, again, it's a bit thick. 
uh, and I may switch over to uh, my silver black velvet. So the most important part here is to charge some of these areas so that the wash keeps on moving, okay? And now we have this, I'm gonna give up, I'm gonna let go of that piece of green here. Um, I'm gonna leave this piece of green though because I want the shape of this leaf to come forward in a bit of a better way, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna bring back my water sprayer because I wanna be able to keep the wash fresh, okay? So I'm spraying some water on it from afar, okay? I don't wanna ruin uh, everything here. <laughs> so just from afar, covering all of these petals, I'm gonna leave that green part here. Now this is where it gets crucial and challenging. I'm gonna switch to uh, my silver black velvet brush, a little smaller will allow me some better maneuverability here. Can't believe I was successful in saying that word. Believe me guys, everything I say becomes harder when I have this kind of a large wash to deal with, okay? So now we're pretty much done with this section. I'm gonna move on to this section here on the left with a bit pure purple or violet rather, like so. And here you really have to be careful, like this, like that. So we got some shapes of the petals here. We have this shape that's really important to preserve. I could have used stronger pencil lines, by the way. This would have made it a little easier here as well. It's important to leave a bit of a highlight near the edge of the leaf, kind of like this, okay? Now you get the point. And this may actually make the mid values look not dark enough, okay? So we may have to revisit them just very lightly. Um, uh, near the end of this video. Now I'm gonna charge this area back with some water. I'm gonna put in some paint and water here so that it stays and now I'm gonna continue on this section because I want it to be somewhat uh, balanced and equal. So here we go, like this, like this, all the way around this leaf and I think here I'm gonna darken it up a bit and here we've reached a point in which it's good to stop on this end, we're gonna go back to the other side, a bit more yellow. Um, I'm gonna probably use a bit more yellow here just to provide a more sense of light. On the left, I'm gonna use a bit more purple. And here I have to be, again, really careful. And you know, a lot of people may work on these types of sections with a tiny brush, uh, like a really small one, and they, they may say that I'm a fool for doing it this way, but for me personally, I hate uh, when I have to uh, work really carefully and, uh, with a tiny brush and I feel like I'm uh, working inside a coloring book. I hate that feeling, so I'm not gonna do that, uh, which is why I don't do that. <laughs> so here we go here as well. And now we're reaching some open area, which is gonna make our lives much easier. So a bit more water, a bit more violet here. I'm gonna wrap up this Part, connect it to this, paint around this, and notice how there are some shadows in between and some gaps. I'm not even touching those yet. The reason why is that they're not a part of the, the current area I'm working on, and I'm not, I'm not gonna waste a moment on them, okay? This is really important to understand. Uh, I'm not gonna waste a moment working on these areas, really. And I'm gonna paint around the vase. I'm gonna need a bit of a stronger shadow on the vase in just a moment. Now let's add a bit more pure yellow here, like so. I gotta keep this edge alive, this edge as well. There's this green leaf around here, and now you can see what the result starts to look like. It's a bit more satisfying, I would say. Um, painting around this leaf and this leaf, and like so. Here I have to be really careful. This part is still quite dark, um, but the part on the right isn't, so I'm gonna have to take that into consideration in just a moment. So I'm placing that in. Now here I'm gonna lighten up a bit and turn it into a bit of a bluer feeling because it's actually um, white. So white tends to be cooler and bluer, like so. And I'm actually gonna end like this. I'm gonna end this shadow around here. 
I changed it a bit from the reference. Now we're going to go back to the left section. Almost lost the edge there. Now I'm going to flip it. So that's going to make our lives much easier. Just to finish off this section here. Like this. I may get a bit of a back run, but that's fine. Now I have to continue with this line here. So that's going to be around here. You just have to make sure that it's congruent, so, but still leave enough gap for the shadow to actually mean something. Like this, fill up that rest of the space. I'm gonna flip it back and now you get to see how we get a much stronger sense of light. Now what I want to do while this is still somewhat wet and I'm gonna spray just a bit to keep it alive, um, is I'm gonna add some shadows to the side of the vase. It has to be much darker here and kind of merge them with the background, if you will. There's a strong shadow coming across from here, and we'll blend these in just a moment, but first I want to connect them to the background wash. And now I'm all over the place in terms of my colors, I don't really care about using a lot of different colors here. Kind of like so. Now here comes the important part, I'm going to switch to my other brush and start blending in those edges. So this part is round, so I have to blend that in, like so. It may be a bit overworked, but I think the final result is gonna be good overall. Uh, this part should be blended as well. And now I wanna go back to the bottom here, grab a bit of darker paint, because this entire thing is really where the shadow becomes a little deeper. It is important for me to convey that. A bit more water to connect this area like so. And the shadow, I'm gonna probably connect to it but not darken too much. So a bit more water, a bit uh, less paint. Kind of like this. And then we blend it into the shadow. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Messed it up a bit, here we go. And lastly, I'll probably lift just a bit back up here. Just to have that previous highlight from earlier that I actually liked the way it looked. So I'm gonna bring back some of that and maybe just another small stray highlight to the right. Kind of like uh, that, okay? So this is pretty much done. The, the one thing we have to do is take care of the darks within, okay? so. I'm gonna have to darken and I'm gonna use a bit of red for that. A bit of brown, let's say, so red and yellow and a bit of blue. Because this has to be darker, as you can see here. This has to be darker. To really get the effect we're after, it has to be darker. And I would argue that also the petals should be darker. So I'm in fact going to do another thin, relatively, glaze over them, okay? get them to be a little darker than they are right now. This is a bit of a risk what we're doing now because I don't want them to be too dark. But I feel like this is a must if we want to convey what this looks like, okay? And especially in these areas that are a bit more half in the light, half in the shadow, you have to convey some of that. You do some, uh, some parts that are half in the light like this, half in the shadow. Um, a bit of a, another petal here, here, some shadows near the base of this petal, some shadows here. And I think with that we're pretty much done. This part I'll probably keep light, I'm, I'm just gonna darken some parts of it. And the left section of it, like so. Now I want to bring back the shapes that are within the petals of the shadows because there are a few sh important shadows there. So I'm gonna use again my Carbazole Violet. A bit of this mixture. At this point it doesn't really matter, just a bit of everything. And you may be able to see, but there are a couple of important shadows here between the different petals. Okay, this is really important for me at least to get. I'm just gonna make this so. And I'm using my tape for the base here. Um, a bit of a shadow here that I think is important for conveying the shape of this petal. Like this, we have another petal here. A strong shadow in between those. We have a very strong shadow that I completely still haven't put in there, like this. 
in between, a bit of shadows on the green, a bit of shadows on this green. This part is completely in the shadow, I kind of missed that, like this. And I think with that, maybe just add a bit of a stronger shadow here, like so. And this will melt onto the left side. And I think with that, we're pretty much done. So this is the final result. Um, you can always add a bit more, take away from it, lift a bit. Uh, but I don't want to get to the point where I'm starting to just do things because I want to do them. Um, I'm happy with it and hopefully there's a good sense of light and shadow. Let me get rid of this so you can better see it. And I'm going to let it dry for a while, sign it and also um, remove the tape so you can see the end result. So the painting is fully dry. Now normally I would wait because there is slight buckling and hopefully you can see some of that. And waiting really uh, allows you to, 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 for the paper to flatten completely 100%, but that's fine, I do wanna show you the final result with the clean edges, so that's one side, that's two. Just allow it like three hours and it'll be good to go, but in my case, in my extreme case, uh, I will take it off. Now, even if it stays buckled, like it's gonna be in this case, don't worry about it. Once you frame it, it will flatten it. If you're selling, if you're trying to sell, uh, you can frame it later on and it will still look great. So here we go. I actually like it the same. It didn't even change anything for me because I really liked the, the way it looked before that, uh, before removing the tape, but still very happy with it. And let me hold it up close so you can see some of the parts a little better. And really, I, if, if you start adding in details to the background now, you're gonna completely mess it up for at least me personally, uh, from um, knowing myself and how I work. So uh, it was really important for me to get it in the first go, the background. This is really important. With that being said, let's wrap up this video. So this is it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in a comment down below uh, if there's anything you want me to talk more about or to further explain. Don't forget to like this video because it really helps you to push it to more people and I am trying to reach as many people as possible. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. I have tons of other tutorials and I'm gonna link as soon as this video ends another video that I think you're gonna really enjoy. So I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again in another vid real soon.